Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motor news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the significance of LTO's classification of electric vehicles. Our road safety reminder in the own street smart sports and centers on what to do when one encounters a solid white center line. This week's spine to pep shall be about the following of the three second distance rule. Showcase this week shall have the mid size SUV from Kia, the all new Sorento 2.2 SX 4x2 AT. All for race weekend, we shall have the highlights of the 2022 Philippine Autocross Championship Series Round 9. All these plus the latest use in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart racing exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Ready? Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Commuters no longer line up to take the Edsa Carousel buses curbside on Edsa at Ayala Station, Makati. They now have a more safe and convenient site to get on or get off from Edsa Carousel buses. Day 1 of the Edsa Ayala Busway Station has begun operations at the A1 Ayala building on the corner of Edsa and Ayala Avenue. Only Bay 1 is operational at the moment, but all three bays will be operational by April of next year. Each bay can accommodate up to nine buses simultaneously. When fully operational, the station can serve up to 300,000 passengers a day, with terminals serving southbound city buses and point-to-point -point buses to FTI, Alabang, Santa Rosa, Balibago, and Binyan. Modern jeepneys and PUVs will have access to the new terminal. According to Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista, the Edsa Ayala Busway Station will benefit mall workers, employees of the Makati Central Business District, as well as holiday shoppers. Twenty-one more modern jeepneys are expected to ply major routes in Pampanga. These are modern jeepneys acquired by the Kamampangan Transport Service Cooperative, Lobao Transport Service Cooperative, and Guagua Betis Bacolor Transport Service Cooperative in support of the government's PV modernization program. The new modernized jeepneys will play various routes servicing Angeles City, San Fernando, San Isidro, Lobao, Guagua, Sasuan. Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board Regional Director Nasruddin Talipasan thank the transport cooperatives for continuing to support the PUV modernization. The LTFRB will continue to provide technical assistance to the transport service cooperatives in the province, Talipasan promised. He added that commuters are now beginning to enjoy riding air-conditioned, spacious, safe, and convenient modernized PUJs. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority said local government units making up Metro Manila as well as national government agencies have committed to work together with it to implement a five-year action plan to ease traffic congestion in Metropolis. The five-year plan will follow the recently completed Project for Comprehensive Traffic Management Plan for Metro Manila funded by the JICA or the Japan International Cooperation Agency. During the last Joint Coordination Committee meeting for the JICA Fund project, MMD Acting Chairman Attorney Romando Artes said, with the approval of the five-year plan comes the next step, which is implementation. Acting Chairman Artes said the implementation of the five-year traffic management plan will require continuous coordination, role sharing, funding, monitoring, and evaluation. The five-year plan covers 12 strategies. The most urgent is to complete the improvement of the 42 traffic bottlenecks identified by the CTMP project and the signal system. Other strategies that need to be implemented and coordinated includes further improving traffic corridors, enhancing the intelligent transport system, strengthening traffic regulations, enforcement and road safety, promoting active transportation, and developing a comprehensive traffic management database.
The construction of the Cavita Lagoon Expressway is facing more delays and full completion of the 45-kilometer tollway has now been pushed back to December 2023. Right-of-way problems are blamed for the delays. Now operational is the 14.24-kilometer segment with interchanges at Greenfield, Mamplasan, Laguna Technopark, Laguna Boulevard, Santa Rosa Tagaita, and Silang East. Still to be completed are segments with three more interchanges, the Open Canal, Governors Drive, and Kawit interchanges. In published reports, Metro Pacific Tollways Corp. Chief Financial Officer Christopher Lizo said the Calex project was supposed to be fully operational by July 2020. The delays have also increased project costs for completion of the Calex by 10 to 15 percent. The 3.9 kilometer 2x2 lane segment of the Calex from Silang East Interchange to Aguinaldo Highway in Cavite is now 62 percent complete. But right of way problems have also now have made its completion uncertain. Calex officials say the segment can be completed in three months once right of way problems are solved. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. During the height of the COVID-19 restrictions, many discovered that kick scooters, electric-powered bikes, electric three-wheelers were inexpensive and easy to operate and maintain alternative modes of transport. They were even encouraged by authorities who understandably were lenient about regulating their use. Now with traffic back to normal and congestion back to pre-pandemic levels, these alternative modes of personal mobility continue to increase in number. The rise in the cost of fuel perhaps added to their popularity, as well as other heavier, more battery-powered vehicles. Now complaints are being heard about their presence on the road and asking authorities if kick scooters, electric bike, and similar three-wheelers can be legally used on city streets and national roads. Many who are thinking of acquiring light battery-powered vehicles or even EVs are asking questions such as, if they need to be registered with the Land Transportation Office, on what roads can they be used? Do they need a license to use them? It turns out that as early as last year, the LTOs issued Administrative Order 2021-39 defining and listing the various classifications of electric vehicles and where they can each be used, and whether one needs to have a license to operate them. AO 2021-39 defines the electric mobility scooter as two, three, or four-wheeled vehicle with or without operable pedals powered by electrical energy with less than 300 wattage capable of propelling a unit up to a maximum speed of 12.5 km per hour. AO 2021-39 also lists three main categories for electric vehicles, L, M, and N, with each farther divided into subcategories. Category L covers vehicles with less than four wheels, and four wheels with some restrictions on top speed, mass, and maximum rated power. Category L1A covers two wheelers with or without pedals, a maximum speed of 25 km per hour. These are restricted to bike lanes, private and barangay roads, and operators must wear bicycle helmets. Category L1B covers two wheelers with or without pedals with a maximum speed of 26 to 50 km per hour. These are restricted to outer edge of local roads, and operators must wear a bicycle helmet. Category L2A covers three wheelers with or without pedals with restrictions to the same category as L1A. Category L2B covers three wheelers with or without pedals with maximum speeds of 26 to 50 km per hour. These are restricted to outer edge of local roads and operators must be licensed and wearing bike helmets. Category L3 covers two wheelers powered solely by electric power capable of speeds of more than 50 km per hour. These are allowed on all roads except highways and expressways. These must be registered and riders must be licensed. They may be used as public transport. Categories L4 and L5 cover three wheelers with a minimum rated power of 1,000 watts, a maximum curb weight of 600 kilograms, maximum speed of more than 50 kilometers per hour, and designed to carry passengers or cargo. Operators must be licensed. L4 refers to tricycles with side cars. L5 refers to three wheelers like tuk-tuks. These are allowed on all roads except highways and expressways and can be used for public transport. Categories L6 and L7 covers e-quads or four-wheeled microcars. L6 refers to light electric quadricycles with maximum unladen weight of 350 kilograms, 4 kilowatt output, and 45 kilometers per hour. L7 refers to heavy quadricycles with maximum unladen weight of 550 kilograms, 50 kilowatts output, and speed above 45 kilometers per hour. L6 and L7 operators must be licensed, can only cross national roads, and may be used as public transport. LGs can issue ordinances allowing L4 and L5 tricycles and L6 and L7 electric quadricycles on main thoroughfares and national roads provided they are constrained to the outermost lane of the highway. LTO AO 2021-39 defines Category M electric vehicles as at least four wheelers designed to carry heavier passenger loads. Category M1 covers electric vehicles designed to carry no more than eight passengers in addition to driver, 
does not have a maximum gross weight exceeding 3.5 tons. Common examples are e-cars, e-SUVs, and e-vans. Category M2 covers electric vehicles designed to carry more than 8 passengers, with maximum gross weight of more than 3.5 tons but not exceeding 5 tons. Common examples are e-jeepneys. Category M3 covers electric vehicles designed to carry more than 8 passengers and have a maximum gross weight of exceeding 5 tons. Category N electric vehicles are defined as at least 4 wheel vehicles solely powered by electric energy and designed to carry heavier goods. Category N1 refers to vehicles having maximum gross weight not exceeding 3.5 tons. Category N2 refers to vehicles having maximum gross weight of more than 3.5 tons but not exceeding 12 tons. Category N3 refers to vehicles with no more than 8 seats in addition to driver and having a maximum gross weight exceeding 12 tons. Existing rules and regulations governing the operation of M and N vehicles powered by internal combustion engines are adopted for their respective electric vehicle counterparts. LTO Administrative Order 2021-39 also states that operation personal mobility scooters are limited to private roads. They may also be operated on pedestrian walkways and bicycle lanes or similar lanes designated by proper authorities with the rider required to wear protective helmets similar to those designed for bicycle riders. Driver's license and registration are not required. The order also states that the operation of electric scooters shall be limited within barangay roads. They may also be operated on bicycle lanes or similar lanes designated by proper authorities. Electric kick scooter riders are required to wear protective helmets similar to those designed for motorcycle riders. Driver's license and registration are not required. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track, and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. You are back with us here on Motoring Today. You now have this week's valuable motoring tip, starting off with some rotate gear reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. Solid white center lines are meant to separate the movement of traffic on multi-lane roads. Kapag ikaw ay nasa daan na mayroong solid white center line, you're not supposed to overtake unless the way is clear and safe. Kung hindi naman, stay on your lane and wait until you can overtake to avoid accidents. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Flying Chupere this week. Payong Chupere lang, kaibigan. Ako si Rodrigo. Isang kapwa niyo, Chopper. Siguraduhin may sapat na espasyo pagitan ng inyong sasakyan at nasa inyong harapan sa tuwing namamasada. Maaaring mo itong gawin sa pamamagitan ng pagsunod sa 3-second rule, kung saan ikaw ay maglalaan ng 3 seconds of space sa pagitan mo at ng sasakyan sa iyong harapan. Humanap ng palatandaan sa gilid ng kalsada. Kapag nakita mong nakalampas na dito ang sinusundang sasakyan, saka ka umabante at sumunod. Tandaan sa pamamagitan ng pagsusunod sa 3 second rolls, maiwasan ang gitgitan sa kalsada. Ito po si Rodrigo Apas, payong chopper lang kaibigan mula sa isang kapwa nyo chopper. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track, and the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Life comes at you fast, if you're brave enough. Drive right back at it. Brave the big city or the great outdoors. Brave the carpool or the extra cargo. Brave the unexpected with Honda Sensing. 
Brave the long road with fuel efficiency to reach your destination. The all-new Honda BRV. Brave the next level. Welcome back to Motoring Today. World of Motorsports is next. In motorsports news, Richard Gallardo ruled the ninth round of the 2022 Philippine Autocross Championship Series held at the R33 Drift Track in San Simon, Pampanga. Gallardo set the fastest time in both the overall and open categories. Novice Martina Sofia Munoz bested many veterans to come in second overall. Ron's user was third with Jordan Kilomali, fourth, and Jen Colina, fifth. Ron's user was second fastest in the open category, dropping Martina Sofia Munoz down to third. Robin Aguilera was fourth, and James Matthew Hees on fifth. Martina Sofia Munoz set the benchmark in the novice class with a time that was more than two seconds ahead of Jordan Gilomani in second. Ragging out the top five in the novice class were James Matthew Hees in third, Nat Mendoza fourth, and Joe Bertko fifth. Morning, the world of motorsports here on Motoring Today, as we now give you Race Weekend. In this race weekend, we head on new to the R33 Drift Track in San Simon, Pampanga to cover the highlights of Round 9 of the 2022 Philippine Autocross Championship Series. Another race to slay here at the R33 Drift Track in San Simon, Pampanga for another round of the Philippine Autocross Championship Series. Actually, I started motorsport I think two years ago. Two years ago, sa ibang event. But the first autocross ko talaga is practice two years ago, two practices, and then last week lang ulit yung parang yung inaka practice ko for autocross. my first special Philippine Autocross Series. So, syempre, unang una dyan is yung on how to prepare the car, physical self mo, and syempre, yung skills na kailangan natin matutunan in order as na magkaroon ng magandang oras din sa Philippine Autocross. Syempre, hindi naman uh, mawawala yung haunting pressure, yung nervous ka, di ba? Pero, syempre, tiwala lang tayo dun sa kung ano yung pinractice natin and syempre, maging excited tayo sa mga new skills na ma-acquire natin during our Philippine Autocross Championship Series. So, sa experience ko po dito sa Philippine Autocross, I enjoy po, ang dami ko natutunan sa pagmamaneho, especially kung paano po sagarin yung gitong uh, stock po na car na which is yung Umikot na po ako ilang beses dito sa kotse, alam po sa racetrack, sa Clark, sa BRC, yun, ilang beses po umikot. Kung baga, natutunan ko po kung paano kontrolin yung kotse ng sagat po na hindi ako madidisgrasa po. Kung baga, natutunan ko po yung limits ng gintong sasakyan. Pagkapitin mo lang mabuti yung gulong para maganda maging oras. Ngayon, ginagamit namin 100 octane. Eh. Di siyempre, 760 plus. Eh. Halos 70 na yung isang litro sa binibili namin na kuwari. Kung, kung blaze yun, 100 octane. Ganun ang presyo. Kulang ko lang 70. Eh, medyo mabigat. Pero, paano gagawin? Eh, yan ang hilig natin. Eh, di, tsatsagayin natin yun. Kung baga, ito ang stress reliever mo. Hindi naman siguro mabibili ng pera yung, yung, ano, yung, yung enjoyment mo. Kaya siguro, baka ganun pa din. Sumali pa rin. Malaki ang posibilidad na lumaro pa rin. Another day, another slay. That's it for us here at the R33 Drift Track in San Simon, Pampanga for another round of the Philippine Autocross Championship Series. Be sure to check us out next week for more Race Weekend Action. The fight for championships in various categories and driver of the year for all across is getting more exciting. It should make for great race weekends to witness live 
cover and review. And that's this week's World of Motorsports. We'll be back after this short break. Transcend your business with the Isuzu Travis. Inquire now at any Isuzu dealership near you. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. In this edition of Showcase, we take a look at the all-new Kia Sorento 2.2 SX 4x2, Kia's entry in the compact SUV market. Kia has made movement that inspires its mission going forward. Great spaces that inspire its products, stores, and services. So does the all-new Sorento manifest the movement that inspires vision? The all-new Sorento takes up a space that is 4,810 mm long, 1,900 mm wide, and 1,700 mm tall. It comes with a 2,850 mm long wheelbase and clears the ground by 176 mm. The new Sorento can be said to inspire with its clean, elegant lines most pronounced in its profile. The fascia offers modern touches in the treatment of the grille, judicious use of chrome with SUV sportiness and functionality of the silver skin plate. The rear continues the clean, elegant look with vertical tail lamps and reflectors and touches of sportiness from the bumper treatment and spoiler. The all-new Sorento does not lack in modern light technology including LED multi-reflector headlamps and auto light control, LED daytime running lights, front fog lamps, high mount stop lamp, and rear combination lights. Other exterior features include body color front and rear bumpers, side mirrors with that power adjusts and come with integrated turn indicators, rear window defogger, chrome belt line molding and outside door handles as well as a power tailgate. The 19-inch alloy wheels on the new Sorento also look sporty, especially wrapped by 235-55R19 series tires. Kia can be said to have been especially inspired to make the new Sorento especially the top-of-the-line SX offered in the country quite welcoming to both driver and all six passengers it can accommodate in comfort and convenience. This starts with a smart entry and remote start function. One can start the Sorento with the aircon on even before you enter the SUV. If you choose not to start the engine by remote, there's still the illuminated push start button. Once inside, driver and passengers find themselves as con in comfortable leather seats. Driver and front passenger are spoiled by 8-way power seats with cooling. The pilot also benefiting by 4-way lumbar support with memory. Second row passengers also find seats that split, recline and slide 60-40 and feature an armrest. The third row seat splits and folds 50-50 fully flat to increase luggage space. With the third row seat up, luggage space is at 357 liters. Folded, this increases to 1,090 liters. Folding the second and third row seats, the cargo space maxes out at 2,139 liters. All those aboard the Sorento won't lack for beverage and cup holders, 10 all in all. They also won't lack for charging ports with 3 USB ports at front center console, 2 at the front seat back panel, and 1 at the rear center console. Add to this the 12 volt 180 watt outlets at the rear console and rear luggage area. Back up front, the driver and passenger enjoy the rich ambiance provided by the metallic and wood trims on the dashboard, as well as satin silver inside door handles. The elegance is complemented by high-tech modernity provided by the 12.3-inch TFT LCD instrument panel that integrates speedometer, commoner, rheostat, trip computer, and multi-function display. Elegance and modernity is combined in the Sorento interior, best represented in the leather-wrapped steering wheel which tilts and telescopes and comes with button and controls for audio, Bluetooth, multi-function display, cruise control, and lane control assist. The gear shift knob is wrapped in leather. The SX comes with electronic parking brake with auto hold. Standard comfort and convenience features include power windows central door locks with auto locking function, dual zone automatic air conditioning. Also standard in the Sorento are console box with tray, electrochromic rear view mirror, glove box with illumination, map and room lamps, sun visors with vanity mirrors, and ticket holder. 
The all-new Sorento infotainment system features an 8-inch touchscreen display, AM FM radio and MP3 player, as well as Bluetooth, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and 4 speakers plus 2 tweeters. Underneath the hood of the all-new Sorento's Kia SmartStream 2.2 L diesel engine with common rail direct injection and variable geometry turbo technology. With a displacement of 2,151cc, the inline 4-cylinder engine generates a maximum 202 PS at 3,800 revolutions per minute and 441 Nm of torque from 1,750 to 2,750 RPM. Power and torque are directed to the front wheels by Kia SmartStream 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. A rotary knob on the center console allows driver to easily select the preferred drive mode for different road conditions or mood. Drive modes include Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Smart. The Sorento rides comfortably enough for a mid-sized SUV with a suspension system that uses McPherson struts in front and a multi-link system in the rear. Handling can be best described as composed with stopping power coming from a brake system that uses discs on all four wheels. The Sorento can be a fun drive, especially in sport mode. He has also equipped the Sorento with the latest in driving assistance and safety technologies. These include anti-lock brake system, electronic stability control, downhill brake control, hill start assist and trailer stability assist, and cruise control. Also standard in the Sorentos are front, side, and curtain airbags. 3-point ELR seatbelts are 7, with driver and front seat passenger also getting pre-tensioners. The top-of-the-line SX also have an additional blind spot view monitor, lane keeping assist, forward collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic alert. Making it quite easy to park the Sorento SX are a 360 degrees surround view monitor and front and rear sensors. Also making it safer children in the Sorento are the child lock and Isofix child anchors on the second and third row seats. There may be enough in Sorento to inspire those looking for a good 7-seater mid-sized SUV. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's Auto Insurance Program, 100% worry-free driving. At the core of Toyota Gazoo Racing lies Motorsports DNA. Combine that with the Philippines' best-selling sedan, you get the Vios GRS. Its black accent details and aero kit upgrade capture the feel and excitement on the track. And the 10-speed CVT that exudes the TGR competitive spirit. On the road or on the track, always be ready for a heart-racing, exhilarating ride. The Vios GRS. Bring on the thrill. Welcome back to Motoring Today. The auto industry now takes center stage. Kia Philippines is preparing the way for the arrival of the Kia EV6 at local dealerships by debunking several myths that may be discouraging people from acquiring BEVs or battery electric vehicles. We have done a research and the research tells us that there are several concerns that have been raised by the buying public. And those concerns, we will now explain to you why they are more myths and perceptions than real issues. That's the reason why we're here, because we need your partnership so that we can educate and communicate very creatively with our buying public why the EV is the new way to go about that. Ayala has launched, as we had explained before, and just a few weeks ago, they launched 21 locations for charging stations from here all the way up to the north in Baguio. So today, those 21 stations are up and running. Very critical as we move further and expand the charging stations that we have here. Debunking the myth about limited range, Kia says the EV6 GT line offers a fully electric, zero-emission powertrain configuration with a long-range, high-voltage battery pack. The EV6 can travel over 500 kilometers on a single charge. 
He also addresses concerns about the supposed high cost of EV maintenance, pointing out that EVs don't require constant replacement of engine oils, transmission fluids, and other lubricants in cars powered by internal combustion engines. This alone results in significant savings. Finally, Kia says concerns about BEV safety should be allayed by the EV6 earning accolades, including European Car of the Year 2022 award and a 5-star Euro NCAP rating. This is the first dedicated battery electric vehicle of Kia. And that would mean from the ground up, literally from the base, which is the battery, to the exterior design of the vehicle, was all designed with this particular vehicle in mind. That would translate to superior aerodynamics and efficiency. And proudly, I can actually say that we've driven the car all around the zone. The shift towards mainstream use of electric vehicles may have just gotten a boost with the launch of a network of public charging stations. The first of this network of charging stations being established by Solarius EV Charging, a sister company of Solarius Energy is set up at the Fairmont Raffles Hotel in Makati. During the launch of its first charging station established in partnership with Accord Group, Solarius CEO Peter Wilson revealed the plan to build a network of world-class destination EV charging locations. Solaris aims to have 60 charging station locations energized by the end of the first quarter of 2023, 180 locations by the end of next year, and 500 locations by 2025. Solaris offers to set up EV charging stations at hotels and resorts for free in return for being allowed to offer guests with EV charging for a fee. EV drivers can enjoy comfortable stays at conveniently located resorts and hotels while charging their cars overnight. So you can always learn more by going to www.solarius.com.ph if you're interested in having a free charger at your location, if you own a hotel or a resort, please contact us. We'd love to talk to you. And for those of you who are driving EVs already, we hope to see you at one of our charging stations soon. And for anybody who's in the market for a new car, uh, please do not consider petrol, diesels. That technology has, has already been and gone. Um, you can switch with confidence to a full electric car and um, own it with confidence. Enjoy driving it and charge at our locations. Thank you. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. If you missed some portions of our show today or any of the past episodes of Motoring Today, you can watch us online on motoringtoday.ph anytime today at your convenience. Also, please don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now on its 36th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with the lifelong commitment to promote road safety. On behalf of our dad, Butch Gamboa, I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. And I'm Susie Gamboa. Happy, Happy motoring! motoring.